Welcome to Private Jets 101 and the first rule, and this is what you have to think about as you watch this video, is you're buying time, you're not buying a plane. Whether you're chartering, whether you're leasing, whether you're doing a fraction ownership, whether you're buying your own plane, you're actually buying time. And that's what you need to think about when you uh, go into this Private Jet 101. So, my name is Fabrizio Pauli, welcome to Visjet TV. If you've never been here before, subscribe to the channel. Lots of content on here about private aviation. And also get yourself a copy of The Quantum Economy. This is my latest book. You can click on the link below to get yourself a copy. Why do you need this book? Because this tells you about the quantum economy, which is happening now, how you can accelerate things, how you can buy yourself time, and obviously the private jet being playing a pivotal role in the quantum economy. In this book, there's also the stories of a number of private jet owners that have used and are using the private jet to build their empire. There's a story of Sam Walton, the creator of Walmart, and how the private aircraft have been key in helping him build the Walmart empire and his family now, which are continuing his legacy, now are operating over 30 jets. So this is very, very interesting. So um, let's get into uh, the whole private jet thing and the private jet 101. Now, first of all, high net worth individuals are the people that use private jets. Now, there are currently 15 million high net worth individuals in the world. A high net worth individual is someone defined uh, as having a net uh, a wealth of over a million dollars. Um, now, of course, a million dollars doesn't buy you a private jet. Uh, so if we move up scale to the people worth 50 million dollars, according to Credit Suisse, there are 264,200 people in that category so um other interesting factor how many private jets are there in the world there's just over twenty three thousand. so if we divide that twenty three thousand into 264,200 that's 8.7 percent of people over 50 million dollars that actually own a private jet now there are some people worth less than 50 between the one and the 50 million that do have a jet and i know some people that are worth 10 15 million that have their own airplane mostly the people in this category are the ones that fly the plane themselves and this is an increasing trend which is happening right now. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, you know what, I fancy buying, buying myself uh, my own plane and, and learning to fly. You can write this off also tax wise, particularly if you're in the United States. There's lots of incentives in having a private jet. In fact, incidentally, 64% uh, of uh, private jets in the world are actually uh, registered in the United States. Um, and it's a great place. Uh, America is uh, to have your own jet and fly around and use it as a business tool. So let's get into uh, the different options uh, in the private jet world. The first option being that of chartering. So you can just you know, pick the phone up, you know, you can ring me or ring another charter broker, um, tell them where you need to go, how many people are traveling and when, and, and that will be organized for you. Now, bearing in mind, don't waste anybody's time in calling to find out, well, how much does it cost to fly? I mean, if you're flying a small jet, it's going to cost you about two and a half thousand dollars an hour. A larger jet, about twelve to fifteen thousand an hour, and anything in between. That's how much it's going to cost you to fly private. Uh, but bear in mind, as I said in the beginning of the video, it's all about time. So yes, it's going to cost you more than flying with the airlines, uh, but you're going to save stacks of time. I mean, for one, with a private jet, you can drive your car up to the airplane in some airports, get on the plane and in the air in ten minutes. So there's none of this getting to the airport three hours before, none of that going on. So you save stacks of time on the ground and in the air. You also have access in, in America, for example, to 5,000 airports compared to the 500 which are serviced by the airlines. When we took look at private jets, it's 5,000. If we looked at unpaved runways, it went out over 10,000 landing strips all throughout the United States. So great advantage. Europe's similar number. You've got about 350 airports serviced by the airlines and about almost 5,000. Uh, which are not serviced by the airline. So you have a lot more options uh, as far as landings concerned. So you need to look where you're going for your meeting because there may be a smaller airport nearby. Um, and why not land there with a private jet and you get to your meeting a lot quicker. So you can save stacks of time by doing that. And that's why I said to you, you know, you've got to think time, not plane. So chartering is, is the first option. It's easy. You pick up the phone, you pay with your credit card or you do a wire transfer. Companies usually charge you extra two or three percent if you're going to um, pay by credit card, uh, but if you're going to pay with a wire transfer, so I do suggest you kind of booking four or five days in advance to give enough time for the money to get to the other end and secure your flight. The flight's only booked once it's been paid for, so that's important. And because these airplanes move around a lot, you'll get a quote today for a flight and that quote will change tomorrow because the airplane that you were being quoted on is probably going to be in another location when your flight's due because in between today and tomorrow someone else has called and booked a flight and there's positioning costs to position the airplane to, to where you are 
flying from too. So these are things you have to sort of consider. So only call to book when you know when you're leaving and at what time and how many people, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. That's that's really really important. All that quote will not be valid afterwards. Now I organize charter flights. You can ping me an email and I can organize anywhere in the world. Uh, but bear in mind that when I organize a charter flight, I do it with companies that I trust. Um, I'm not going to be the cheapest out there. If you're looking for the cheapest, then don't use me. Use somebody else. Uh, for me, safety is number one. Um, and the safety record in private aviation is very, very bad. Um, as I've said more than once here, and I say it also in my book, Quantum Economy, uh, the safety record is 9.2 times worse than the airlines. And you're paying 15 times more money than a first class ticket. So bear that in mind. So make sure that if you're going to charter, that you charter from a reputable um, operator. And the best way to do that is use somebody like myself or our other broker that can filter out the bad operators from the good ones. Uh, now, the next one option is leasing a plane. You can lease, lease a private jet for three months, six months, a year. Uh, this is an option that uh, uh, is becoming quite more common now. Uh, certainly after COVID and that, people are not too sure if they want to jump straight in and buy an airplane. So they'll lease a plane for six months to a year. Um, the advantage of having a lease is that it, the airplane sits on the ground available for you 24-7. Uh, well, when you charter, you may ring up and you may not find an airplane available for you uh, on the day that you need it. But if you're leasing a jet, it sits in the hangar at your local airport. It's available. You control the plane, the pilots and whatever. Um, the only downside is, you know, you don't own it. Um, you have it for the term of the lease and then you return it. Um, it will be more expensive than having your own airplane um, per hour. Uh, but and it will be more expensive than chartering because you have the airplane available 24 seven and the fixed cost of the airplane, like the pilots insurance and whatever, whether you fly or not, you still have to pay for. So that's kind of uh, one to bear in mind, but you, you, you will get, you know, as I said before, you will get that leverage on time because you've got that airplane that can spring into action any minute. And what I'd like you to think about is don't just think about every time that plane moves, you have to be on it. You can send your team out on that plane, or you can send the plane out to pick people up to come and see you. And this is really, really, really a good hack. Uh, with when having a private jet. Just interrupting the video very briefly because here on BizJet TV we're giving out lots of free general information about private jets and the private jet world. But if you are really contemplating buying a private jet, let's help you to make that decision in the best informed way by getting very specific, specific to your case. And to do that, just ping me an email and we will schedule you in for a one-to-one -one call and help come up with the right strategy so that you, your team, your family can start joining that quantum economy. So ping me an email, let's get on a call. Let's get back to the video, off we go. Now the third option is a shared ownership. So you may have a buddy that lives where you are um, and you decide, you know, you're going to buy the airplane together 50 50. So you split the fixed costs and then and then each person will pay for the variable costs like fuel and that when they fly. Um, or you may find somebody that's or someone like myself that can maybe team you up with, you know, one or two other people and you can buy the airplane together. The downside uh, of sharing an airplane is that if you both have to travel on the same day, then who's going to who's going to have the airplane on that day and who has have to go and charter. Uh, but, you know, if you can get your schedules to, to, to work, uh, then, you know, shared ownership is certainly a, a good option. The other option is fractional ownership. Everyone's heard of NetJets or FlexJet, which are the two main uh, companies out there offering fractional ownership. They've got hundreds of airplanes in their fleet. Uh, it's a bit pricier uh, than, than, than other options that are out there. But, you know, both NetJets and FlexJet, um, they train their pilots well. They're good maintenance, good airplanes. Um, so that they, they are they are good the, the way they operate. Um, the other option which is out there is like buying a block of hours or a jet card, um, and you can do this with fractional ownership companies. You can do this with charter companies as well, or even with some brokers offer this option as well, where you 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 pay per hour. So you buy I don't know a card worth twenty five hours, um, and you fly those twenty five hours. Um, now the downside you know of of all these options which I've spoken to you about. Uh, right now is you can't really customize it. You're very limited. I mean, you can customize a lease to a certain point. You can, you know, wrap the airplane for the term of the lease, put your name on the tail, um, put some cushions and, and, and plates inside the airplane with your name on it. You can do that if you're leasing a plane because it's purely dedicated to you. If you're doing a fraction ownership thing, you will find that, you know, every time you ring NetJets for a flight, a different airplane turns up with a different crew. So you can't really customize it. 
but with the leasing you can it gets you very close to what it's like um, to own an airplane and of course ownership is the ultimate thing usually people go into ownership when they're going to be flying over 200 hours a year but you know since the covid thing happened and the lockdowns um there have been a number of people that decided to sort of go ahead and, and buy an airplane anyway uh, what usually happens when you buy a plane, you tend to fly more than what you thought you were going to fly because, you know, the, the mindset is, well, it's sitting on the ground. It's costing me money whether I fly or not. I might as well use it. Or I might as well. Use, or how can I use it to make money? And this is really the question you need to ask yourself. You know, and sending the plane out to pick people up to come and see you saves you time. Again, the whole time thing, which is important. So these are kind of uh, the the options. Um, you know, how much do these things cost? Of course, if you're going to buy an airplane, you've got to bring in aviation lawyers you've got to create an spv for the airplane you've got to watch taxation on the airplane importation duties uh, you've got to do a pre-buy inspection on the aircraft you've got to hire a crew there's a lot of technical things that need to be done and if you're a business person and you don't understand airplanes you need to have an aviation advisor and this is where i can help you and, and and guide you through the whole process and take care of all those things for you to make sure that you know you buy the right plane you use the right lawyers um the pre-buy inspection is done correctly, that you hire pilots that know what they're doing and they're going to fit in with, with, with the organization. If you need a management company, you know, I can help you select the right management company for you that will manage the pilots and the plane and the maintenance and all that stuff for you. Um, so that's basically it. And now the trend that we're finding in the market right now is that there are more and more people learning to fly and consequently buying their own airplane and flying themselves around. Now, there's a great advantage to that because there is a pilot shortage right now. So attracting pilots and keeping them, you really need to pay them a ton of money. And now uh, salaries for captains on private jets, uh, you know, for corporations and stuff like that, uh, we're talking in excess of $250,000 a year, 250 to 350 a year. And that will bring you a good pilot and will keep that pilot with you. Um, of course, you need to hire a certain number of pilots as well for your airplane. And this is where, you know, if you're going to buy yourself a, I don't know, Citation M2, for example, which is a single pilot jet, you learn to fly yourself. You don't need to hire a pilot. You fly yourself. So it's like having your car on the, on the driveway. You can just jump in the car and go. You can jump in your plane and go. Uh, now, it's always my recommendation, if you're going to do this, to have a few, two or three freelance guys that you can use to fly with you. And, and that can simply be, you know, uh, a young man that's uh, teaching someone to fly at the local flight school or even, you know, getting his commercial pilot's license, whatever, that can come along for the ride, sit in the right-hand seat, and do the radios for you and read the checklist. Um, that, you know, will help you with your single pilot operations. And look after the airplane as you go in for your business meeting, you know, fuel it up, get the flight plan ready for the next flight, so you don't have to worry about that. This is something that John Travolta does. He's got a whole team of pilots that he has hired. Um, he doesn't fly a single pilot. All his airplanes are um, require two pilots but he has a team of pilots to look after everything for him and then he jumps in the seat when he wants to to do the takeoff and landing and then he lets his pilots do the rest. So um, that's kind of it uh, for the private jet uh, 101. Now, of course, here I've given you general information um, and as you've seen um, me say here uh, in the interruption of the video, um, if you want you know specific information, it's best to reach out to me. Just ping me an email and we'll schedule you in for a call. And remember, get yourself a copy of the quantum economy click on the link below also on the link below you'll find um the link to my newsletter which comes out every week um i'm sure that will be interest to you and check out this other video we did uh, about the new news on the um private jet world that we did recently because nba uh, conference in las vegas was just on uh, the other week um and there's a few interesting things uh, as a result of the, the conference have been announced including the Honda Jet Echelon which is an interesting airplane so check that one out and that's all from Producer Party on Bitchet TV and I'll see you in the next one